JWST and the X-ray Space Telescope Chandra have teamed up to reimagine some of the famous web images. By combining the infrared light collected by JWST and the X-ray light collected by Chandra, we can see the true value in combining all of the powerful telescopes that we have access to. And we get a new way of looking at some amazing objects in space. These images are basically what you could see if you had both X-ray vision and heat vision. So I think it's safe to say that this is what some superheroes might see if they looked at these objects. The infrared light of Webb lets us peer into the dustiest regions of space and see otherwise hidden stars, and it lets us see objects that are more distant than any other objects we can see. While NASA's Chandra telescope looks for X-ray emission from very high energy and hot regions of space, such as exploding stars, clusters of galaxies, and the regions around black holes. By combining these different wavelengths of light, we get to understand these objects even better. I should also say that I have dedicated videos breaking down all of the web images we're about to see, so be sure to check those out for more information if you want it. Firstly, let's dive into the Carina Nebula, one of my favourite JWST images so far, and one that only receives a subtle change from the X-ray data. All of these new images are composite ones that combine a Chandra X-ray image like this with a JWST infrared image like this into a new, fuller image like this one. In this one, we see a dozen or so X-ray sources shown in pink, scattered amongst the dust of this star-forming region in space. Everything in this image that isn't pink is coming from the JWST data. Those X-ray sources that we can see here are mostly stars in the outer regions of a star cluster. This star cluster seems to contain very young stars, just one or two million years old, and younger stars tend to be brighter in shorter wavelengths of light, so X-rays are perfect for picking them out. The brighter pink that they look here, the younger they likely are, so we gain a really nice way of differentiating different ages of stars in this image. There's also some diffuse X-ray emission in the top half of the image, probably coming from the hottest and most massive stars in the cluster. Next up, let's look at the Cartwheel Galaxy, which is an interestingly shaped galaxy that formed from an interaction with a smaller galaxy about 100 million years ago. Here, we have the infrared web data in red, orange, yellow, green and blue, while the pink and purple colours come from the X-ray data. Here, I absolutely love the pink colour this galaxy has gained in this composite image. Most of this X-ray light will be coming from superheated gas, stars going supernova and releasing huge amounts of energy, or even black holes and neutron stars ripping matter off of companion stars and releasing X-ray radiation while they do so. For more information on the web image, check out my full Cartwheel Galaxy video. It's linked in the description and in the top right corner now. The third image we saw was of Stefan's Quintet, a group of five galaxies that look related. Sadly for this one though, it's much closer than the other four which are interacting. But this one is actually so much closer to us that it's not interacting with the others at all. The web image showed us previously unseen details of these interactions, including sweeping bursts of star formation and shockwaves through the gases of the galaxies. The Chandra data, shown in the composite image as light blue, highlights this shockwave even more as colliding gas is heated to tens of millions of degrees by the friction of the interaction, causing it to emit the high energy X-ray light that Chandra can see. As a bonus, this composite also contains data from the older infrared telescope Spitzer, although this does trace much of the same structure as the higher resolution web data. Finally, we got an update to the Deep Field SMAX 0723 image. This is a galaxy cluster so massive that it bends the countless background objects, creating the amazing warped shapes and even multiple images of the same objects that we can see here. The galaxy cluster, though, actually contains more than just galaxies. It also contains a huge reservoir of superheated gas, emitting very high energy X-ray light. This is invisible in the web image, but is shown in bright blue by the X-ray data from Chandra. This gas has a temperature of tens of millions of degrees, while also possessing about 100 trillion times more mass than the Sun. That's actually even more mass than is contained in the galaxies of the cluster, so it will be contributing to the gravitational lensing we see in the image. However, invisible dark matter makes up even more of the mass of the cluster, 
So that's still the main thing, providing the mass to do the lensing here. I hope you've enjoyed these new and improved images, and we can look forward to many more of them, since the data from these telescopes will be combined many more times in the future. If you want more information, I have a video going into the surprising way that Chandra actually collects light, because X-rays are too high energy for a normal reflector design to work. Feel free to check that out or check out any of the videos I have about Webb's awesome images and subscribe if you're new. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.